Hey everyone, um, good morning from Zoom and thank you so very much for being here. Um, I'm Jessica Berg, I'm the director of the Minnesota Cup and um, I see a lot of familiar names in the um, attendee list. So hello to all of you, um, particularly the judges and mentors that are, are making the time to, to root for and, and hear from the, the semifinalists. Um, I am going to uh, quickly turn it over to Joe Watt to offer a welcome for you, and then I'll, I'll kick things off. Good morning, everyone, and, and welcome. Um, thanks, Jessica. Uh, my name is Joe Watt. I'm a senior director at ECMC Group, where I lead up our corporate development and impact investment efforts. It's on improving access and outcomes for learners, borrowers, and workers. Um, we do that by providing and investing in innovative solutions across the post-secondary landscape. Um, a core part of our work is, is our Education Impact Fund, which is a um, $130 million plus corporate venture capital fund that is investing in early stage impact-driven companies that are aligned with our mission. Um, and towards that end, we're really excited to support um, initiatives like the Minnesota Cup, which helps seed innovation and entrepreneurship in the Minnesota education and workforce community. Um, I'm really excited to be from the companies and wish the founders um, all the best of luck in the competition. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll kick it back to, to Jess to, uh, to talk some more about today's showcase. Thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, we are super grateful for the time um, that you and other folks at ECMC spend um, sort of helping to cultivate this division at the very beginning, um, the time that you spend sort of helping to judge and evaluate the, the business plans that we receive. So thank you so much. Um, I also want to thank Edmentum and Capella for their financial support of the division. Um, just for those of you who are maybe new to learning about Minnesota Cup or are finding us on the recording of the showcase, Minnesota Cup is a program of the Home Center for Entrepreneurship at the Carlson School of Management. So we are based within the Carlson School and within the University of Minnesota, um, which gives us some great relationships and access and connectivity to innovators within the U system. But we are actually, uh, operated like a not-for-profit. So we are open to uh, support and help lift up and bolster early stage entrepreneurs from anywhere in the state of Minnesota. Um, but we raise all the, the funds that we need both to operate the competition and give away uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money every year um, from the generosity of corporations and grant making organizations within Minnesota and um, have some aspirations to get some support nationally too. So truly, really and truly this work would not be possible and we would not be able to make it free and accessible without um, ECMC Group, Edmentum, Capella and the other sponsors that, that continuously show up for Minnesota entrepreneurs. And um, we're really grateful for that. We also are able to do the work at the scale we are because of the tremendous community support through volunteer judges and mentors that, that give of their time and their expertise to these founders throughout our process. We, um, you're seeing a moment in time and a small group of founders, but our process actually kicked off in March and April of this year when we opened up applications to entrepreneurs across Minnesota um, we had thousands of applicants and um, our volunteer judges then did the work of assessing and trying to determine um, whom from those folks uh, would really be the best fit or were the top 10 in each of our nine divisions that should move forward and compete in this semifinalist round. So um, we, we could not we could not um, give feedback. We couldn't handle that, that volume of applications on our own, most certainly. And truly the, the individual industry and functional expertise that those folks bring to the table help us do our best to choose the, the most um, sort of impressive, most um, ambitious of the, the businesses that, that we really want to elevate and support through our free resources. So um, thank you so much. Um, 
we, we look forward to a lot more um, exciting opportunities and um, growth for these businesses. And I will give you a little bit more context and information about what comes next for them after the pitches are over. But um, to, to just get things moving and get to the stars of the show, I'm going to turn it over to Jamie Bartlett, who's our Minnesota Cup program coordinator. She is going to give you a little bit of a rundown on how the showcases will work. And um, yeah, thanks again for being here. And I'll, I'll talk to you all again at the end. Thanks, Jess. Okay, um, so here's our agenda for the pitches today. Uh, each team will have three minutes and three slides to tell you a little bit about their company. Uh, and then I'll get back on and I will ask each team a question that's generated from the judges a little bit earlier in the season. And then stick around audience because you have a chance to get involved and vote on the best pitch of the day. And that team will win a little bit of money. So yay. Um, okay, so let's jump right into it. First up for today, we have Brent from Career Authority. So once he, oh, and I see his video and he's unmuted. So take it away, Brent. Awesome. Hello, everyone. I'm Brent Peterson. I'm one of the co-founders of Career Authority, the inventor of FlightPath, and an innovative software that puts you in control of your career. As an XHR executive with companies like PepsiCo and Beckton Dickinson, I know the importance to have a career plan and, and vision for employees. And managers in HR do their best, but often other priorities get in the way, leaving you without much of a plan for your career. This leads to low engagement, Sometimes careers being disrupted or totally thrown off track. And hey, we spend about a third of our waking hours at work. So why shouldn't it be a source of fulfillment rather than worry and harmful stress? Slide two, please. We designed our Flight Path Pro for college, student, and early career pros like Ryan and Tina. And with a completed Flight Path, they have a strategy that gets them off on the right track. They can update and gain guidance from it throughout their long career. And just maybe they can finally move out of their parents' home. Our Flight Path Pro is designed for experienced pros like Michelle, a soldier transitioning to civilian work, or for the Marvins looking for some insurance against disruption. Which one of these can you relate to? One of our clients, an engineer with an MBA, after 15 years into his career, thought he wanted to become a CEO. And after the Flight Path Pro experience, he realized he'd be happier if he pursued a chief technologist role. Our system reveals hidden insights that help people get on the right path for them. Next slide, please. In three steps, we combine software with live expert advice. Step one, you visit our website, you download the assessment workbook, you find a quiet place to work on the assessment that asks you questions about your skills, experience, network, and even your values. With Flight Path, you pick the profession you're interested in. We don't pigeonhole you, unlike our competitors that tell you what you're best suited for. We allow you to pick the profession, and then Flight Path flexes to reveal the gaps for the field you select so you can plot a course to your selected destination. Step two, a day or two after you send us your workbook, we turn on the analytics and email you your completed Flight Path summary, which includes gaps in competency attributed to the profession you selected, gaps in the experience, education, network, and those values, and a place to document all your detailed plans. This is really all you need to build a world-class career plan. Finally, in step three, we meet with you to make sure you understand the report, work with you on your plan, and empower you to explore other career options as needed, knowing that Flight Path will dynamically adapt for you. For more in-depth information about our patent-pending technique, please visit us at grittierlto.com and here's to a bolder career. Thank you. Good job, Brent. <laughs> okay, question for you. How do you know that you have a product that works? Is it efficacious? Yeah, uh, we've, we've given away a, a tremendous number of flight paths and I will say that there hasn't been a disappointed customer from lack of insight. And then our friends at the University of Minnesota Alumni Association advertised our value proposition and we're really happy to have 80 participants in a pilot that is literally starting next week. So uh, um, plus we've made a few sales. Nice, All right, good job. Thank okay, you. next up, Holly. Okay, take it away. Hi everybody, I'm Holly LaRochelle. I'm one of the co-founders of Engaged Employees. As a smart business leader, you all know that the workplace has drastically changed over the last year and a half. 
Um, the challenges of remote work have increased the stakes for attracting and retaining top talent. You've seen the studies and you know that disengaged employees are way more likely to leave your organization. And the ones who, are, who stay can cost you thousands of dollars per year in lost productivity. You know retention of talent is one of the top concerns of all organizations, but as a leader of a small or a medium-sized business, you know it's life or death. Without good workers, your organization is doomed. We found that 87% of organizations cite that culture and engagement are one of their top concerns. And 85% of remote workers say that their managers are responsible for connecting workers to their company's culture. There's a costly turnover tsunami occurring and surveys show that employees leave because they feel disengaged. When they're disconnected from the mission, the workplace and their coworkers. There's also the problem of cultural breakdown when there's unclear expectations, when they're not feeling heard or when their needs aren't being met. Companies need to address these workers' concerns which revolve around flexible workplaces and positive workplace culture. Next slide, please. Engaged employees provide solutions for modern leaders and their remote teams. We have online toolkits that provide strategy, advice, and easy to use tools, including templates, plans, and job aids to make it super simple to quickly engage your team. Some of the example topics in our toolkits include team building, recreating social opportunities, how to connect with your team, and setting expectations as a group by engaging your employees. Next slide, please. Visit our website at engagedemployees.us. We have, we have a free sneak peek available to you so you can get a feel for what our toolkits include. If you like what you see, it's really easy and affordable to purchase our toolkits. Um, they're versatile, they're easy to implement immediately. You're able to pick and choose from multiple tools in each kit based on your specific business needs. And as we're growing business, we're continually adding more content to help modern leaders like you adapt to this new fluid environment. Engaged employees, helping your STEAM team stay connected even when you're apart. Thanks. Awesome job, Holly. Okay, question here. Uh, what's your plan to drive customer growth and adoption? Our marketing plan is to uh, reach out to local businesses first, and that's actually the stage that we're in now. We're having folks try out our toolkits, give us feedback so that we can improve our product and our service. And then with word of mouth and doing free educational um, engagements with local business, um, business organizations, um, giving them free, uh, easy to use samples so that they can get a feel for how our, or what our products are and how they can use them so that that could drive um, others in their organization or word of mouth um, for, for wider adoption. Awesome. Great, good job. Thanks. Okay, next, Ellen from Homeschool Boss. Hi, Ellen, all right, take it away. Okay, great. Hi, my name is Ellen Crane, and I am the founder and owner of Homeschool Boss. Uh, we are a customer-focused homeschool testing service. The reason that we went into this business is that as a homeschool parent, I saw that homeschool testing is broken. Um, any of us who have taken a test knows that, home taking, that, that that's, it can be stressful. And it's also stressful for uh, parents of homeschoolers who are taking a test. Um, however, while homeschool parents are primarily considered concerned with the experience of testing, that's not what our competitors are focused on. Homeschoolers want um, convenience, they want a low stress test environment, and they want accuracy and they want clarity. And that just isn't possible for many of our competitors. Um, next slide, please. Our solution, uh, we have um, negotiated with NWA to offer their gold standard math growth assessment. We are the only homeschool testing service authorized to offer math growth to homeschoolers. Um, we have designed an online experience that our customers frequently call seamless. 
Um, and then we have warm, helpful customer service agents and um, that are, we're always there. We're quick to answer emails or the phone. Um, and we offer bespoke consultations for our um, customers who want a little bit more handholding to understand the results. And these things might seem obvious, but it just isn't available in the homeschool testing market. Um, uh, next slide, please. And all of this is working. Um, over the 2020-2021 school year, we more than quadrupled. We've had more than $500,000 in revenue uh, this calendar year. And we expect our business to double again in the 2021-2022 school year. Um, we have a, we have um, hundreds of five-star ratings in Trustpilot. And we are really excited about the prospect of um, what's gonna happen with the homeschool market because uh, according to one survey, 15% of school parents would prefer to have their kids continue to be educated at home after the pandemic. Um, so we just, we see that our, our market is just gonna continue to grow. Um, so thank you very much. All right, thanks Ellen. Okay, question here. And I feel like it's a little funny because it's, going against the name of your company, but would you limit your market to homeschooling or consider it in the classroom as well? Well, um, we do work with micro schools. However, um, at least for the testing component of our business, we, we plan to expand in the future to um, include some curriculum. Um, but uh, the uh, our test supplier works directly with um, large schools. So, as um, we aren't gonna compete with them for that. Uh, we, do, we are working with more small schools and um, we expect to expand in that market over the next few years as well. Awesome, okay. Well, good job. Okay, mm -hmm. next Manford from Manny's Market. I think you might be muted. Sorry, I was on mute. My bad. Yep, take it <laughs> All right, take it away. Hi, I'm Manfred Foster, a special education teacher who came up with a unique system that will better student outcomes, reduce teacher workload, and be a profitable company. Being a special education teacher is hard. You have administration pounding you for reliable student data, uncontrollable behaviors in the classroom, plus you need to modify, then teach curriculum. While searching for a solution to my problems, I found a giant hole in the market. Looking at this graph, you will notice that the competition only offers a partial solution. Manny's Market offers everything a special education teacher needs. We are a simple to use data collection app with a built-in behavior management program and financial literacy skills curriculum. When students perform positive behavior, they get paid in fake money. Students use that money in conjunction with the financial literacy skills curriculum to make real life financial decisions. Nobody else offers an opportunity for stu students to learn in this hands-on and relevant way. Next slide, please. In a survey of 50 special education teachers, I found that 80% are making their own outdated and clunky paper and pencil systems. 63% are looking for a better solution, but have not found it yet. Clearly, there's a giant hole in the special education market and we're here to fill it. We are entering a growing market. Special education spending is at $13.6 billion and is expected to reach 16 billion by 2030. There are laws in place that guarantee special education spending will increase each year. Our total addressable market cannot be reduced. Digitalization is the way of the future in education. Schools are moving more towards an online curriculum as it is more interactive, easily implemented and adapts quicker to new research than textbooks. Due to this, the global educational technology market is expected to grow at a compound annual rate of 20%. We are currently pre-revenue. However, we have two schools using our prototype and I've had multiple administrators inform me they're very interested in our product and cannot wait for Manny's market to be available. 
by offering our product as SaaS that charges similar to our competitors, but offers much more, we will become a profitable company that dominates the market by 2026. Please, uh, next slide. Lastly, as a special education teacher, I know the pain points in the market. I live it. I know what teachers want. I know what students need and how to get them. I also have an experienced team working alongside me. Sean Foster is a national board certified special education teacher of 30 years and has started two special education programs. JJ Foster is an entrepreneur who has experience building startups. Not only does Manny's Market give students more time with their teachers, it teaches and reinforces positive behavior skills and gives at-risk students financial competence. If you're interested to learn more, my on contact information is at the bottom right. Thank you very much. Great job. Okay, question here. Would Manny's Market apply to all students or is it only appropriate for special education? Great question. So I am starting off focusing on the special education uh, population. However, I have heard from administrators that they're excited to implement this in the gen ed population, but I'm going to need to modify it first. So starting off focusing on the special ed population and then eventually branching out. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Chet from Parlotti. There you are. Okay, take it away. Hi, my name is Chet Sizio. I am the founder and CEO of Parlotti. In manufacturing today, machines cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, and are incredibly complex. Yet manufacturers are hiring people off the street without adequately training them to run these machines. This can be a very dangerous situation for both the operators and the machinery. These problems are getting worse because of the aging workforce leaving and taking a wealth of knowledge with them. Today, training is done in classroom settings or job shadowing uses, using placards, one-point lesson plans, posted stickers, and machine manuals. Machine manuals are often too cumbersome to use in practice. These manuals often contain vital safety information for the operation. 80% of the problems restricting a system's cap capacity and product quality and cost are attributed to poor operating and uh, procedures and practices. Next slide, please. However, training done in the classroom doesn't yield good results unless it's repeated. People forget, uh, forget over time. Look at this curve of forgetting, for example. Let's say that you were being taught a procedure in one hour on day one. If you do not uh, refresh yourself on that procedure on day two, you will only remember 40 to 60% of what you thought you knew. In day seven, even less. By day 30, you would have retained only two to 3% of what you think you knew. If you had gone back on, on day two and refreshed that information for even 10 minutes or five minutes on day seven, you would continue to be where you belong. Is there a fix for this? Yes, there is. Parlati is a patented software application that pro provides procedural instruction to manufacturing workers in a time-based visual and audio format. It results in improved machine output and worker safety. It will get you to an overall world-class equipment effectiveness of 85% or better. Next slide, please. Pilates is available to manufacturers for a no-cost beta to provide us with feedback on the operation and its use. We would love to hear from you and have you participate in this program. Even if you don't work in manufacturing, please share us with your network. Thank you. Great job, Chet. Okay, question here um, from the judges. Serving small and enterprise customers seem to be very different propositions. How do you plan to tackle both? That's a good question. Uh, right now we are providing this uh, a no cost beta to understand what the manufacturers really need, be they small or large. And by doing this, we're getting enough feedback so that we can, we can improve uh, the application 
and, and make it fit for either the small guy or for the large manufacturer. The fact is, unless we understand more on what their needs are, we are going to hold back. We have something like 10 to 15 additional deliverables available for that application, but we're holding back until we hear what the customer needs. Great, all right, good job, Chet. Okay, next up, Ryan from Tablemaker. Hello. Hello. Okay, take it away, Ryan. Thanks. Um, talking about mentorship. Now, mentorship benefits every part of society from 12-step support groups to exclusive startup incubators. Mentorship matters. And one space where mentorship can really make a big difference is in higher education. Now, higher ed administrators, they agree that mentorship matters, but that doesn't make managing mentor programs any easier. It's really a high touch, time consuming endeavor and programs often get their budget cuts and things. And existing offerings in this space are overdeveloped and out of touch with the needs of mentor program coordinators. The existing offerings specialize in just scaling mentor programs, helping them get bigger. But as you can see in this slide, the needs of a typical academic department are much more complex. Mentoring is not just about connecting students with alumni. A typical department has milestone mentoring, such as students preparing to study abroad or preparing for major exams. They have role-specific mentoring, such as mentor programs for new instructors or first-time department chairs, affinity mentor groups, such as mentor networks for the hockey team or dance team, and then identity-specific mentoring, such as programs for um, women in engineering or first-generation college students. So as you can see, what colleges really need is the ability to scale the creation and management of mentor programs. Next slide. And Tablemaker does just that. So with our freemium offerings, excuse me, freemium offerings and extreme usability, we make starting and managing a mentor program as easy as creating a Facebook group. Our automated forms allow you to quickly um, recruit participants, create a mentor gallery, collect data that you can use to put the human touch on creating mentor matches. And mentor program coordinators can manage as many different mentor programs as they need to, and participants can participate in as many as they want. And serving these small niche mentor programs is actually a huge opportunity. Mentor program management software market is currently over 300 million and on track to double by 2025. And Tablemaker, we're actually gonna be playing a role in growing that market because as we gain traction, the typical academic department will have the ability to create three mentor programs, one connecting new and senior students, one connecting students about to graduate with alumni and one connecting new and veteran faculty. So the revenue potential actually scales with the positive impact we're having on society. We're launching version one for the start of this school year with two pilot partners, one at the University of Minnesota and one at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's. Uh, next slide. Oh, and there's one more thing. Table maker is designed for exponential growth. So we're starting with higher education, but the sky's the limit. For example, with our current pilot partners, because mentors are people that are connected and leaders in their community, we're already gonna have users that are leaders at companies such as Medtronic, 3M and Amazon. So within our freemium offerings and our built-in network effects, we're gonna be able to grow exponentially as we pursue our mission statement, which is to connect potential with experience everywhere. Thank you. Nice job, Ryan. So we know a little bit about mentor programs here. <laughs> My um, goal is to make your life easier, Jamie. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, mentor matching often requires a lot of front-end vetting of mentors. How will you provide quality control for this? Yes, um, by helping make it local. So for example, in a typical academic department, they already have a list of who the good mentors are. They know who graduated from their program in the last five years. So by helping make mentor programs local, it actually lowers the stakes for vetting. When you're trying to make these big, giant, automated mentor programs, then you need some vetting service. But when I'm just making it easier to reach out to the people you already know and serve the network that you're already a part of, um, the stakes are a little lower. So at the first hand, I just want to kind of use the technology to release that human brilliance, that localized knowledge you have of your network to start with. Great, good job, Ryan. Thanks. Please make my life easier, thank you. Yes. Um, okay, Jim from Toco. Hi, I'm Jim from Toco VR, and today we'll be discussing the processes and problems of engineering education and how we think we can help. But first, 
I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the market for engineering education. The demand for engineers in the U.S. will grow over 8% by 2026, and six of the top most in-demand jobs worldwide are engineers. As our world becomes more technically complex and the urbanization in developing nations increases, access to engineering education is essential. So how do you become an engineer? Next slide, please. So traditionally, you would attend an on-campus university, you learn the fundamental science and math behind engineering concepts, and then you apply these concepts in hands-on activities. This step of applying new concepts to real systems is critical to gaining a deep understanding of complex engineering systems. So how can we help? And what problem is it that TOCO is trying to solve? Well, first off, number one, laboratory equipment is very expensive. It takes up a lot of valuable floor space, it requires maintenance, and it sits idle most of the time. This equipment can be damaged by improper use and can sometimes be dangerous. Number two, uh, on-site equipment is only available to on-campus students. This means that remote students lose their valuable hands-on learning experiences. Because of this, there are very few remote undergraduate engineering programs. And number three, millions of students worldwide live in STEM deserts, and that means they don't have access to engineering universities within a commute distance of their homes. Often non-traditional and underrepresented students depend on local income, family connections for support, and they can't relocate to pursue a, a higher education. Next slide, please. So how can we help? The focus of TOCO is to reduce the cost of laboratory equipment while increasing accessibility for on-campus and remote students. This is done through virtual reality experiences that connect engineering concepts to the real world. Other valuable content can also be made available, such as industry tours and other unique visualizations. For example, mechanical systems can be viewed in real situations like manufacturing facilities or power plants. Electrical concepts can also be rather hard to grasp. With VR, students can visualize the flow of electrons, something that can't be done with, this, with uh, excuse me, physical lab equipment. What if everyone had access to engaging hands-on training, no matter their physical location? Our goal at TOCO is to create these experiences in VR for access anywhere, anytime. Creating accessible engineering education will play a crucial role in these coming years. And we're dedicated to help building the learning environments that are needed for supporting this future. Thanks. Good job, Jim. Okay, question here. Uh, there are a number of VR education companies in the market. What is your big differentiator? Sure. Well, what I would say is the, the folks that are in the engineering education VR, or excuse me, in the VR education market are not typically pointed at engineering. Uh, engineering is, is fairly specialized, and uh, most of the training programs that you do see are focused a little bit more on uh, corporate training and often HR training. And so uh, this is unique in, in that regard. All right, great. Thank you. Next, last one for the day, folks. So, Nicole. There you are, okay. Take it away, Nicole. Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Dimmich, co-founder of Thrive Ed. There is widespread agreement that the traditional model of school just does not work. Do you all recall that moment where you studied for a test and then promptly forgot everything the day after? Tiante, one of our student interns, um, described the frustration of learning something for two weeks in class that he could have learned on YouTube in five minutes. Even the physical look of school has changed little as the desks are still so often in rows or positioned in rows that demand some sort of compliance. Our students are even struggling to name moments in school where they are deeply engaged. And I bet we all can remember a class where we took, um, where we watched the clock um, obsessively. School is way too often seen as a hoop to jump through versus a meaningful experience um, that creates this runway for our, our scholars, our students to lean into their strengths, explore their interests and aptitudes, and really be confident in developing the critical skills that, we, that they need to thrive. Antonio, one of, our addition, uh, one of our other interns said that, you know, school should really be a place where we design our lives. But instead, the old way of school persists. On the next slide, we talk a little bit about the three problems we're trying to address. The first one is a relevance gap. What students are learning and how they are being assessed does not set them up for success in their future. Business leaders, 
students, parents, and educators agree that students need to learn critical skills and competencies that will help them collaborate, that will help them communicate, that will develop financial literacy and critically problem solve. Minnesota's workforce really needs a pipeline of youth that leave high school with a foundation of these skills. We cannot expect students to learn these critical thinking and collaborative skills and assess them in the same way that we always have so often with a multiple choice item. Number two, our students of color are far less likely to be proficient in reading and math than their white peers. Despite our relentless efforts to address and eliminate achievement disparities, we are no closer and the pandemic has exasperated these inequities. And finally, school also does not work for educators. Over 50% of teachers leave the profession within their first five years, and Minnesota increasingly struggles to create conditions where teachers of color choose education. At Thrive Ed, on the next slide, we are reinventing school with the end user in mind and at the decision-making table. Students are critical partners in this reinvention. We have tested the ideas and elements of our student-centered framework based on research over the last two years. It will play out as a collaborative lab school and in our design studios, and its reach will influence education throughout Minnesota and the nation within the next three years. Investing in Thrive Ed means investing in our future workforce. The return on your investment is a cohort of dynamic student leaders who are diverse in thought, background and experience, and who will be equipped to solve problems that we can't even yet imagine. We are building a movement of thriving community members, students, partners, investors, and donors to capitalize on this momentum and make deep transformation. Are you in? Good job. All right. You almost threw me with the are you in. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. Here's your question. <laughs> um, okay. So question, if this model works in a lab school, what is the market potential across the U.S.? Beautiful. We anticipate that, um, well, we have tested some of these ideas already, but in a lab school, it's so difficult for educators to do things differently and innovatively when they haven't experienced it. So the, the notion of a lab school is to create that sense of, okay, these elements are going to be not only tested, but refined in this lab school. And then it will be a destination place for other schools, um, students and teachers and leaders, as well as the community to come and experience how we are doing these partnerships how are we really personalized learning for students? And, um, and that will then trickle back and be a, a place where other schools can learn how to make these deep transformations. Awesome, great, good job. Okay, we are done with our pitches, everyone. So audience, I am gonna launch a poll for you to vote on the best pitch of the day. And Jess might even give us some fancy Jeopardy music if we, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll see. All right, here it goes. Okay, it's a super close poll. I would even say neck and neck. So if you have not voted yet, but you would like to, please take the next couple seconds and get that in. Oh my gosh. They just, there's a couple that just keep trading off the lead. Do you think we're good to call it, Jamie, or should we? I think so. I th okay. All right. I will end the poll. Awesome. Red line's the winner there, so I'll let you announce it. Awesome. So um, after triple checking that I don't say the wrong thing, um, the winner of the best pitch vote goes to Table Maker. Congratulations, Ryan. Great job. Wow. Thank you all so much. Thank you all for being here. And um, like mentorship, entrepreneurial entrepreneurship is a community activity. So I couldn't do it without all of you that tuned in and the support of the whole MinCup team as well. So thank you all for being here. Awesome. Good job. Um, so 
just to wrap things up here, um, no, uh, just getting to see all these great founders and um, learning what they're up to, figuring out different ways to support them. I hope that you all continue to follow along and stay engaged with them. I just wanna let you know um, what is coming up next in our process for these companies and the next opportunity you'll have to actually get to watch some of these pitches again. Um, so this group, uh, after going through the gauntlet of getting selected to be within our, our top 10 semifinalists um, earlier in the summer, did some hard work and put together a business plan, a pitch deck, and a one minute video that they submitted on July 25th. So they were super busy and they've already cross some big hurdles to get to this moment today. Um, right now, our division judges are reviewing those materials, evaluating them, and next week they'll be meeting live to really debate and discuss and do their best to come up with the top three companies that will move on to our final round. And for those three, that will mean that they will do another longer, sort of more traditional investor style pitch um, in sort of a private setting for our judges. And then um, the division judges will choose our winner, runner up in third place from those three. So um, there is $25,000 at stake for the division winner and the opportunity to go on to pitch uh, for a grand prize in front of another group. And um, so, yeah, there's just, there's a lot more to come, but I hope that all of you semifinalists, whatever the outcome, um, all feel like winners because you've um, you've done some incredible work and rose to the top of some really competitive ideas to be in this position. So congratulations, good job to all of you. And to those of you in the audience, please save the date for Monday, September 20th in the evening. Um, the time is still a little bit in flux as we land on the final format, but it will likely be from four to 7 p.m. And that will give you an opportunity to see pitches from all of our division winners across um, not just education and training, but our other eight divisions as well. And um, give the opportunity again to vote on your favorite, to learn different ways that you can get engaged and support early stage entrepreneurs in the state of Minnesota. So please save the date. We would love to have you uh, part of that event. And just want to thank you again so much to all of you for showing up to support um, congratulations to our teams and thank you so much to our sponsors and volunteers for helping us make Minnesota Cup possible. Um, thanks again. Have an amazing weekend and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. And in, in, I'm sure September 20th will come here really fast. So um, see you soon and, and thanks again. Bye y'all.